through building our wrought iron handrail for my new staircase. And we are also neck deep in Rob's truck trying to remove the cylinder head. But we are also eagerly awaiting our Shapeoko 3 XXL CNC router. I blame the evil babies. We got part of our carbide 3D shipment. We got the T-Track. The rest of the shipment apparently got lost in shipping somewhere by UPS. So it's four days later now and we're still waiting. This is the spot where it's gonna go once we build our table. Finally here! It has arrived! Oh man! I'm so excited! I'm so excited! Because I'm so excited! <laughs> one note on here that says leave me and one note that says deliver, delivery me. Delivery me! Please delivery me. And this note says, leave me. That is bizarre. <laughs> Here we go. Click and start. Tool change required. For tool number one. Tool number one's in there. At this point, we've done several successful jobs with the Shape Oko, and it's been great to work with. As you would expect from a machine that's marketed to hobbyists and makers and is pretty affordable for this type of equipment, there are some issues and workarounds that are worth mentioning. I'm going to point out a few problems that we encountered sort of in the order that we ran into them. The first problem we ran into was that the bracket for the limit switch for the x-axis carriage was crashing into the bracket for the belt that drives the x-axis before the limit switch could be fully depressed. We resolved this by adding two small washers behind the standoffs that hold the bracket, moving it over just enough to clear the belt clip. The next problem that we ran into was that the screw that holds the limit switch to the bracket was getting caught up in the cable chain as it rolled down the track. 
This end of the cable chain connects to the x-axis carriage with an L-bracket and two machine screws that fit into a slot. In order to create enough clearance for the chain, we moved one screw to the outside of the bracket so that the nut on the other side just pinches the edge of the bracket, and the other screw we moved to the outermost point in the slot. You'll notice that only about half of the cable chain now rests on the rail, which leads us to our next problem. To attach the fixed ends of the cable chains to the two rails, Carbide 3D provided two small squares of double-sided tape. We didn't have a lot of confidence that this was going to hold up, and actually the first time we ran the machine, one of them popped off. After that, we drilled and tapped the rail and used a small machine screw to secure the end of the cable chain. The Shapoko doesn't come with any printed instructions or a manual, so you'll need to have your laptop on hand during assembly. The online instructions are pretty clear and easy to follow, but there are a few mistakes and things that just haven't been updated as they've moved to new parts. Both the Makita and DeWalt trim routers are initially shown being installed with the cable leading out to the right, but as you move on to the next section for cable routing, it becomes clear that this is backwards. We opted not to route the power cable as indicated, which would have left a dangling loop being dragged back and forth by the Y-axis carriage, and instead secured it to the full length of both cable chains with zip ties. The instructions are very specific about the procedure to feed the motor control wires up through the three punch outs at the bottom of the control box, but our kit came with a different enclosure that just had one hole at the top. This wasn't really a problem since it was pretty obvious where everything goes. After getting everything put together, it was pretty easy to get started carving with Carbide Create and Carbide Motion, but both programs do have some bugs and some serious limitations. To unlock all of the 3D carving tools and Carbide Create, they want $120 a year, and after using the trial version, I'll just say that it feels more like free software. After I've had a little more time to play with it, I'll do another video about some of the software bugs and workarounds, but until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe.